I want to talk to you tonight from this topic, don't fall away from grace. Tell somebody, don't fall away from grace. It is a statement tonight that I would bring clarity to based upon the word of God because so many times over so long you have been hearing that person fall away from grace and it is very misunderstood what fall away from grace means. Tell somebody don't fall away from grace. You ever hear that phrase? Somebody fall away from grace? Now people say a lot of stuff. And a lot of stuff are not even Bible. You can fall away from grace, but not what a lot of people think. So a person is going down the street, a Christian is walking down the street, and that Christian missed the mark or did something that is not godly. And people will point their fingers and say, that person fall away from grace. Mm. That's not fall away from grace. Mm. The scripture that was read by Deacon Dickerson tonight from Galatians, the fifth chapter, I want to pull out verse 1, 4, 6, and 7. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, 4, 6, and 7. Then we get to Galatians, the third chapter. Tell somebody, don't fall away from grace. The path that the Lord has us on and taking us to another level, a higher level. And we're going to go through some rigorous training so that when we get there, we can be ready for the task. But the word tonight is don't fall away from grace because the enemy is going to tell you that you are not qualified for where you're going, but he's a liar. Verse 1 of chapter 5 of Galatians says, Stand fast. Tell somebody, stand fast. Stand fast. Saints of God, no matter what test you took and fail, tell somebody, stand fast. Stand fast. We talk about grace. We're living in the dispensation of grace. Stand fast, therefore, where? In the liberty. Yes. Uh, somebody give me the next word for liberty. Freedom. freedom. Stand fast, therefore, in the freedom. Wear it. What's the next word? Christ has made us free. Amen. Who made you free, Sister Ellie? Christ. Amen. He made you free. But we want it free from what? Mm -hmm. You know, in the country that we live in, in America, they say freedom of speech. That's so real good, right? Freedom of speech. You go into the police house, you go into the police station and threaten them. Oh, freedom of speech, okay. <laughs> you know where you're going to end up. You don't even have to say much today. They call it terrorist threat. Feel us peace, sound good. We want to know what God set us free from. Amen. He said, be not entangled again. That means we were once entangled, but Christ set us free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. When you're yoked, there's something around your neck. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you just a little example of bondage. And the bondage that the Lord is talking about in the scripture is the law. Amen. The law. Anytime, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. The law. Look at verse 4. 
What did he say there? Christ. Christ is become of no effect unto you. In other words, in today's language, Christ don't mean nothing to you. All of what he did for you, it does not mean anything for you. Look at it. Whosoever of you are justified by the law. What do you mean justified? To be declared righteous. Christ set us free from the law, which was a yoke of bondage. The law had a purpose. But the Lord is saying, if you are going back to be justified, to be declared righteous by the law, then you are falling from grace. Amen. That's what falling from grace means. Okay, let me... Come here, Eddie. So Ellie was over there and she was working real hard according to the law, trying to keep all the commandments. And the Bible said, none of us, Ellie, you, 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 you and me, none of us kept all. Mm -hmm. And then Ellie read somewhere in the Bible, if you break one, you're guilty of all. Mm -hmm. So Christ said, I got to come in to save her. I'm going to use grace, God's unmerited favor, to save her. So the Lord, come on over here. The Lord, pull you away from the law and place you on the grace. Amen. Grace, you don't deserve it because you're still not perfect. But God said, I'm going to declare you righteous. Wow. Amen. Now, Ellie, her father told her not to take the cheese. He didn't tell me that. I'm just saying that. Don't take the cheese, Ellie. And Ellie went in and took the cheese. And the father, she did not know the father count all the slices. And when he got in, one of them was missing. Who took the cheese? Ellie, I don't know. She just lied. Yes. That's an example, right? Mm -hmm. She just lied. Okay. Now Jesus said, don't do that thing. And you went out, or we went out, and we did that thing. So now we break his commandments. But because of grace, and God said, I gave you, amen, my favor. I'm going to forgive you. Because I know that you could not be justified by keeping the law. All of us have come short, the Bible said. All right? So now you're on the grace. Are you going to go back to the law? No. You're happy over here, right? Yes. Because when you make a mistake, when they take your cheese, God said, just ask me for forgiveness. Yes. Right? Thank you. So now let's go back to the first, fourth verse. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified or declared righteous by the law. You are fallen from grace. Good God, man. Tell somebody, don't fall away from grace. Whatever you do, don't go back over there and believe that by your good works, that's what made you righteous. All of our righteousness, the Bible says, what? Like what? Filthy rats. And a lot of people believe. Believe that they're more righteous than you because they're keeping more laws. Now, I, I am not saying to go and break the law. That's not what I'm saying. No. But I'm saying you become short of keeping everything. God has you on the grace. And because you're on the grace, amen, God don't want you to go back and try to be justified by your own works. And that's why you are not more saved than the other person. Amen. Oh, good God Almighty. Look at the next verse I told you. What was that? Verse 6. Now look at one of the bondage, one of the yoke. 
for in Christ Jesus, when you're in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availed anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Wow. Well, you ain't circumcised, so you're not qualified for the blessing. No, it doesn't go like that. Or you are circumcised to come on in. It doesn't work like that. Or you belong to certain ethnicity. Or you live in a better neighborhood. It doesn't work like that. In Christ Jesus, None of those yokes that people try to put on you matter anything. But if you have faith in God, that's what matters. Amen. Look at verse 7. So you did one well. Mm -hmm. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Mm -hmm. Wow. There's a lot of people out there are just waiting and some have pointed their fingers at you just to slow you down mm. or just to stop you from doing what God calls you to do. Mm. Tell somebody, don't fall away from grace. Don't fall away from grace. And because they're pointing their fingers at you mm. and because they have deemed you not worthy, the stride that you used to have, your stride becomes shorter. Good God Almighty. But the Lord is saying, don't let nobody hinder you. Amen. As long as you're still depending upon God's grace, good God Almighty, and don't go back to your works, amen, to be justified, amen, as righteous, as long as you're not going back Amen to, to works and the law. You're still under God's grace. Amen. You can't fall from grace. Amen. Good God Almighty. Look at Galatians, the third chapter. Look at verse 13. Write those, these verses down. 13, 17, 19, 21, 23, down to 26. That's 13, 17, 19, and 21 down to 26. We're going to extract those verses. Mm -hmm. Christ, verse 13, mm -hmm. had what redeemed us from the curse of the law. Do you know on the law that if you break the law, all of these curses supposed to come on you. Mm -hmm. Go to Deuteronomy 28 in the spare time. In the spare time, Deuteronomy 28. Curse is everyone. If you only break one, your food fall off your trees, your baby born, amen, still birth, and all of these things. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law. And we're going to see the reason for that law. Because there's a reason. Redeem us from the curse. So, Minister Luke, anyone pronounce over you that you're cursed, amen? That is not God. Amen. You are no longer under any curse. Good God Almighty. Christ had redeemed us. When you are redeemed, that means He pulled you out mm -hmm. from under it. God Almighty. There was the next person with a back pain that did not come. But God wanted to heal it tonight. Mm -hmm. And your back pain is more severe than the person that came. Mm -hmm. More severe. God wanted to heal you, but you've got to believe by faith. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law because he was made a curse for us. It is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He went to the cross. They hung him there. He was made a curse. In other words, 
He paid the ultimate price for the curse. Good God Almighty. So you don't have to serve no time of curse. Because Christ did that for you. Good God Almighty. Verse 17. This I say. Now look at it. The covenant. The covenant that God made with Abraham and his seeds. Okay? The promises that he made. The covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law. It was confirmed before the law came. God had a covenant with his people. It was confirmed 430 years after the law came. 430 years after God made a covenant with his people. He said, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of God not effect. There's a reason for the law. So here's God saying, Ellie, I'm going to bless you with all of these things. I know the Lord saw that you were wandering off. And that's why he gave some laws. Because you were driving too fast. You were going down the wrong path. So I have to put some laws in place. Amen. Not to disqualify what I promise you. But I put those laws in place so that you will know that you need Jesus. Amen. Oh God, I thank you. I'll jump ahead of my time a little bit. But that's what the law is for. Go down to verse 19. Wherefore, then serve it the law? The law was added because of transgressions. It was added because of sin. Till the seed, which is Christ, should come to whom the promise was made. Because God said, I'm going to bless Abraham and his seed. Talk about Jesus. And because we put on Christ, we became the seeds of Abraham. So God put the law in place because of sin. And the law stayed in place until Jesus came. Good God. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Good God Almighty. Mm. So here was Jesus saying, well, the law is in place because these people are transgressing too much. But when I come, I'm going to bring grace because they all fell short. Mm. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. What does that mean, God forbid? <coughs> no. It is not against the promises of God. It is not to wipe out the promises of God. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Now take that real slow. If there was a law that was given, okay, if there was a law in place that could give life, then righteousness should have been by the law. But there was no law in place to give life. Look at God said more, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. But before faith came, Jesus brought faith. We put our faith in him. Before faith came, before grace came, we were kept under the law. Shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. I'll tell somebody, amen, don't fall away from grace. Don't fall away from grace. Good God Almighty. Go on some more, 24. Mm -hmm. 
Now look at the law, the purpose of the law, Armando. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. You see that deacon? That's what the law was for. You ever, you ever been down the road of life and you know you need Jesus? The law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified or declared righteous by faith, faith in Christ. Could God Almighty. If there was no law, none of us would know that we are coming short. When you read the Bible, you know, no, don't step over there. Don't do that. Don't go there. You know because there are laws in place. To keep us in line. That's what the law was for. To let you and I know we need Christ. We cannot do this on our own. Go on some more. But after faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. That's it. Wow. The dispensation of law. Don't govern whether you're saved or unsafe. We're on the grace. Remember, I'm not licensing you to go and sin. That's not what God is saying. Mm. Mm. Find a scripture for me uh, with the sister in Romans. Shall we continue in sin that grace much more abound? Okay. He said, For you are all the children of God by faith. That's what makes us children of God. Because we put faith in Christ Jesus. Not because you kept the law. Good God Almighty. That's not the reason why you're children of God. This is what the enemy does. The moment you miss the mark, he tried to let you feel that you are lesser than a Christian. That's what he tried to do. But God is saying to you tonight, don't fall away from grace. Never on this journey, you should believe that you don't need God's grace. Amen. What the scripture is? Romans what? 6 verse 1. Give me Romans 6 verse 1. Put that away for me real quick. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? No. Go on to verse 2. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin? live any longer there really. Even if you miss the mark, saints of God, you know without a shadow of a doubt the conviction in your spirit, you cannot live in it. Good God Almighty. But got a Holy Spirit on the inside of you. One of the things that the Holy Spirit does is to bring conviction. You ever do something out of God's will and you feel convicted? As if you are arrested, you're going behind bars. Conviction. Look at the next verse. Mm -hmm. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Good God Almighty. He said, don't you know that? The water baptism that we do is symbolic mm -hmm. of what took place when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Good God Almighty. No, the water baptism does not save you. You get water baptized because you are saved. We're going to have a water baptism hopefully in the summer. 
for those that were never water baptized and you are saved. We will not baptize you if you're not saved. Because the only qualification to be water baptized is because you're saved. You got some peers, well, can you baptize my baby? No. Are they safe? No. If they're not safe, they're not a candidate. Look at the next verse. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That's where we put him in the water to demonstrate what took place. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Uh, saints of God, don't fall away from grace. As saved as you are, still hold on to God's grace. Amen. And never you point your finger at someone mm -hmm. based upon their works and say that one is better than that other one. No, no. All of us is because of grace why we are saved. It is no longer works, lest any man should boast. Amen. It is a gift of God. Thank God for his gift. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Give me one more verse still. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Once you are saved, saints of God, you are always saved. Let me say it again. Once you are saved, you are always saved. Good God Almighty. The Bible said, no man can pluck you out of his hands. And no man can pluck you out of the Father's hands. Good God Almighty. Because the Lord began a work in you, he will perform it until the end of the age. He started a work in you, and Ephesians chapter 1 said that you were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. Before you were born, God chose you. Good God Almighty. St. John 15 verse 16 said, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. That you should go and bring forth fruit. Don't listen to folks when they say that the devil is trying to get more people in hell than God. The book of life is already written. Your name was placed in that book. Before you were born. Before I formed thee, I knew thee. Before you came forth out of your mother's womb, I already ordained you. I already sanctified you. I already set you apart. Jesus' church, amen, is already in the book of life. Some of you are youngsters right now. You don't have any babies yet. But the Lord, the Alpha and Omega, know exactly, amen, how many babies you're going to have and how many babies are going to end up in heaven. Tell somebody I am chosen. chosen. Don't be deceived by anybody that wanted to go back to the law. Because all of those that are trying to keep the law, amen, they're still breaking the law. Because nobody kept it but Jesus. Let's bow our head. Lord, we thank you for your blessing upon us tonight. Lord, we thank you that you are our high priest and we can come boldly to the throne of grace to find help in time of need. Lord, we thank you for your grace, your unmerited favor upon us. Lord, we thank you that you promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And who can lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Lord, it is you that died. Who is he that condemned it? Oh God, you died, you paid a price. And Lord, we thank you tonight. Oh God, we look unto you. 
because you are the author, the finisher of our faith. Lord, we know that we are more than conquerors through you that love us. It is no longer our works. It is not because of our own works, lest any one of us can boast. But Lord, we thank you for the gift. Good God Almighty, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We thank you for eternal life tonight. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. Amen. amen.